Third, I, I wasn't referring to my immediate family. I, oh, are I, we delightful? Oh, of course you're delightful, but uh, I was just rehearsing a speech I have to make at the breakfast club this morning. Say, uh, why aren't you in school? Oh, I'm not going today. My class is going on a field trip. Big butterfly round up. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, they pick me up out front. Well, I better go get my nap. Boy, I wish I could get Uncle Charlie to go along. It's been really down the dumps these days. Yeah, I've noticed that myself. Ernie, here's your sandwich. Steve, your coffee's getting cold. Oh, Charlie, I won't be having breakfast. But I don't tomorrow. blame you. Nothing duller than home cooking, especially mine. Oh, no, no, it isn't that, Charlie. I just forgot to tell you, I have to make a little speech at the breakfast club this morning. Say, uh, why don't you go along? No, thanks. I got to catch up on a lot of ironing. Come on, Ernie, here's your lunch. Here. Hey, Uncle Charlie, oh, my teacher loves company. You want to go butterfly hunting with us up at Mulberry Hill? That's all I got to do at my age. Run around with a butterfly net. They'd throw one over me. <laughs> What's the matter with him, Dad? Well, Ernie, I think maybe your Uncle Charlie has a case of the household grumps. Is that bad? Well, I don't think if you catch it at the start. I think uh, what Uncle Charlie needs is a change of pace. Maybe we can figure out something. Charlie O'Casey! Dave Claiborne, what are you doing in California? Well, I'm here for the harness racing season. The Pacers and the Trotters are in town. Dave, if you came here with the idea of making another touch... Oh, me? I came by here, Charlie, to pay you that 300 that I owe you. Uh, plus 6%. Now, that's $318. You know, frankly, Dave, I figured you was a crook. Oh, well, now, that shows how wrong a man can be. Uh, but naturally, my having to go down to Mexico, I don't have the time to race my horse, uh, Gypsy King. So you race, so you don't race. Uh, just get out my 300 Oh, damn. $318. Don't forget the interest. Now, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to sell you, Gypsy King, for $418. Dave, I knew you'd have some kind of an angle going. Okay, out with it. Spring the trap. A trap? I offer you a beautiful business opportunity, and you call it a trap? Now, look, you get the 300 that I owe you plus the 18, right? So, therefore, you only owe me $100. You gotta be kidding. I owe you $100? <laughs> Charlie, nobody can fool you. You know horse flesh. Now, I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you come out to the track right now and see Gypsy King for yourself? Uh, no, no deal. I got, I got too much housework to do. Housework? Wouldn't you rather be sitting in a sulky, driving a handsome pacer around the track? Well, maybe I could put the housework off till tomorrow. But remember, I ain't buying. I still remember what a con artist you are. I'm just going out there to take a look. All right. Come on. I got to admit, Dave, he's a nice hunk of horse flesh. Letting him go that cheap. There's got to be a gimmick somewhere. Now, let me tell you the honest truth. If you let Doc Weatherford here training, you can't miss. You'll rake in all the big stakes and make thousands of dollars clear profit. Is that on the level, Doc? Well, I have to be honest with you, Mr. O'Casey. He is 11 years old, a little past his prime. Well, Charlie, you know these trainers, they always have to have some kind of an out for themselves. Well, we're past our prime a little too, huh? But uh, we still got the old get up and go, right? Yeah, I've seen some fair 11-year-old nags. Yes, well, uh, I don't want to rush you, Charlie, but I've got to get out of here from Mexico at noon sharp. Now, here's the transfer of ownership papers, and all you have to do is sign. And give you a hundred bucks? Oh, wait a minute. Who said I was buying? Now, just because a horse is good-looking doesn't mean he can win races. He might be sore. And how do I know he don't break? Tell you what you do. Take him on the track yourself right now. What do you say, Doc? Can you do it? It's all right with me, as long as Mr. O'Casey knows what he's doing. Love, Doc. I was racing paces and trotters on the old fair circuit. This here is a job cart. <laughs> it's like riding in your mother's arms. <laughs> Sonny. Nice horse. Thanks, Pop. Wish I could say as much for that dog. <laughs> what kind of a crack is that? Eleven years old? Why, he's ready for the chickens. Look, Sonny, horses are like people. 
They're as young as they feel. Come on, let's show them, Gypsy. Excuse our dust. Come on. You really gonna stick a pal with that bag of bones? Stick him. It's a bargain. For $100 cash, she's lucky to get four horseshoes. <laughs> Charlie, I can see that look on your face. Uh, you're 30 years old again, and you're heading right for the winner's circle. Yeah, me and Gypsy King were a couple of kids again. <laughs> Once racing gets in your blood, there's no losing it. Well, <clears throat> Charlie, I've got to leave for Mexico. Now, I don't want to rush you, but if you don't want the deal, just forget about it. Doc here will be very happy to buy Gypsy at that price. Oh, no, you don't. Come on, get out those papers. you got a deal. That's great. The doc here will witness your signature, and I can leave a happy man, knowing that I've done a good deed for an old pal. Okay. And here's your hundred bucks. Still got the old grouch bag. Well, so long, Doc. Thanks for everything. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Claiborne. What about your feed and board bill? You still owe $75. Oh, not me. Talk to the owner. Hey, I'm not paying your old bills. Oh, Charlie, are you still fussing over chicken feed? You're a big man now. You own a racing stable. You win ten times that bill in your first purse. Well, Charlie, Doc? Doc, he may be 11 years old, but he looks more like a two-year-old. Just like I feel. I can't wait till I drive you in the race. We'll make a great combination. You drive? Uh, you have a license? Well, I used to have one back in Indiana. It might be a little faded by now, but still ought to be good. We'd well, better see the Stewart to get a transfer to California. Well, where's the uh, Stewart's office? It's just around the corner. Oh. And while I'm over there, I'll line up a good race for my stable. Stable? Oh, oh, oh you mean Gypsy King? <laughs> yeah. Gypsy King. And spend a dime on a payphone? You don't know Uncle Charlie. Remember when he went to San Francisco? He carried home the postcards that said, having a wonderful time. <laughs> Hi. 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 Well, to make it home in time for dinner? Plenty of time. Uncle Charlie isn't even home yet. Oh. We haven't heard from him, so I put a casserole in the oven. Okay. Maybe he stopped off at the Elks Club just to relax. Well, I hope so. I wish he'd get interested in something. Uncle Charlie sure isn't feeling very good. He hasn't yelled at me in days. Yeah. Maybe he wouldn't like the idea of me taking over in the kitchen. I think it's a good idea, Kate. As a matter of fact, I think we could all do a little more with the housework around here and give Charlie time to have some fun. What kind of fun? Well, I don't know. Uh, I tell you, I'm going out to the golf club tomorrow. Maybe I'll ask him to go along. I don't think Uncle Charlie's going to get too excited about golf. <laughs> I heard him say you hit a little ball and then you chase it. He said a pool parlor makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to find something he'll enjoy doing. Ah, hiya, folks. Hi, Sorry I'm late. Had a little business. But over quite a deal. <laughs> oh, uh, what kind of a deal? Folks, you're looking at the new owner of that famous pacer, Gypsy King. Pacer? <laughs> a horse? Yep. You mean you bought a racehorse? Right. Uh, how much was it, Charlie? A hundred bucks. Well, naturally, I had to pick up the board and feed bill. How much was that? Another 75. A mere drop in the old oak's bucket. Uh, is that $75 every week? Well, the horse has to eat and sleep, don't he? Oh, sure, but uh, that's quite a bit of money. <laughs> There's no problem. I'll take a little loan on my insurance until the purses start rolling in, and then I'll be smiling all the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great you've got all this action going. Uh, if you need any help, I... Uh... No, no, you've done enough, Steve. <laughs> it's about time I start paying my share around here. Ernie, how would you like a new bicycle? Well, fine. I'd like one with handbrakes and three gears. You got it. And Chip, you're old enough to have your own jalopy. Well, I've got my license. I'd sure like a jalopy to go with it. Done. And I'm not forgetting the rest of you. I'm cutting every one of you in on the purses. When do you plan on racing the horse? Well, uh, there's one little problem first. Uh, What's the problem? 
Well, just, just the detail. First, she's got to be qualified. What does that mean? I went in to see the racing secretary. Okay. So Gypsy King had a few slow races. So what? Uh, how many slow races? Nine. Out of how many starts this year? Nine. <laughs> now, about this qualifying race. They got a rule that a horse has to show that he can run a mile in less than two minutes and nine seconds before you can enter him into a regular race. Charlie, do you really think you ought to get involved in a tough competitive sport like this at your age? You think I'd let anybody else sit behind Gypsy King? Not on your life. Well, I'd better get dinner ready. Oh, I, I fixed up a tuna casserole. I hope you don't mind, Uncle Charlie. Mind? I couldn't be happier. And you better practice up on ham and eggs, too, because I'm going to be out at the track every morning at 5 a.m. working out my steed. Ah, get up! <laughs> well, boy, he's a, she's like a kid with a new toy. See, he doesn't realize that he's, he's way past the age for driving horses. Well, Rob, a lot of fellas drive harness races that are a lot older than Uncle Charlie. But the important thing is that, well, he is like a kid with a new toy. And isn't that just what we're trying to accomplish? Now, uh, when Uncle Charlie comes out, no jokes about the way he's dressed. He needs all the encouragement we can give him. What happens if Gypsy King doesn't qualify? Well, we don't even think about that. Well, he has to win. That's all there is to it. Katie, just winning isn't enough. He has to win in better than 2-9. Besides, uh, even if he does qualify, it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to start winning purses. Hey, look. Is that our Uncle Charlie? How do you like the outfit? I borrowed it from Doc. Later on, I get my own colors. Well, you look very professional, Charlie. You know, Steve, I've been thinking that after we win the qualifier, I might drive Gypsy King in his regular races. You know, I wouldn't even have to leave California. They got plenty of tracks around here. Oh, how do you like them, Steve? Well, Charlie, I don't know too much about it, but uh, he looks fine to me. Well, take a good look at him while he's standing still, because when we pass you, he'll be nothing but a blur. Folks, <laughs> about time. You want to see the race, the best place is up in the press box. Oh, fine. Well, good luck, Charlie, and uh, be careful now. Careful? Huh. Steve, you're talking to an old pro. Oh, but you haven't raced in quite a while. Steve, let me tell you something. Sulky driving is just like swimming. Once you learn the Australian crawl, you never forget it. Never. Uncle Charlie, you sort of swim side stroke. <laughs> well, if I did the Australian crawl, I'd never forget it. <laughs> Where are my goggles? They're on top of your head, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Come on, Jeffy King. Let's show our relatives a little class. Good luck, Uncle Charlie. Get him out you there in front, Uncle Charlie. And keep him there. How about this? If I'd have raced back in Rome, I'd have made Ben Hur look like a bum. <laughs> Say, Pop, keep that old nag out of my way. Listen, Squirt. Gypsy King ain't no nag, and I ain't your pop. Sorry, pal. And I ain't your pal either. <laughs> this is every horse for himself. Come on. All drivers for the next qualifying race move up to the starting gate. Hey, what kind of thing is that? That's the marshal's car, Ernie. It makes sure all the horses get a fair start. Outside. 
means that horse is practically out of the race. Get out of the way. Gypsy King. Uncle Charlie's got him going smooth. Yeah, slow, but uh, excitement of winning the race. But you still have to do better than 2 on 9 to qualify. What was the time? Looked to me like he was going pretty fast. Fast? It was 2.15. You see, two of the horses broke, so all he had to beat was a couple of slow old-timers like himself. You, uh... You want me to tell him? No. No, I'll tell him. Better get out of the stables. Ah, how was that for a couple old timers? Talk about a streak of lightning. <clears throat> we must have been close to the record. Well, Charlie, I. Uh... I thought you were going along there pretty good, too, but... Yeah. The doc had a clock on you, and... Uh, and? Well, he clocked you in uh, 2.15, Charlie. 2.15? Yeah. Oh, you gotta be kidding. We didn't even qualify? I'm sorry, Charlie. Uh, well, maybe you and Gypsy King can try it again sometime. Huh? No. That was our best. We gave it all we had. I guess Gypsy King's racing days are over. And mine too. Well, Charlie, there are a lot of other things you can do. Sure. Laundry, vacuum cleaning, dishes. Thanks very much. Well, he's not at the Elks Club either. Where do you think he is, Dad? I have no idea, Chip. I know he was pretty depressed. I didn't think Gypsy King did so bad. He came in first. I feel so sorry for Uncle Charlie. This will put him right back where he was. Nothing to look forward to. Hiya. Sorry I'm late. Uncle Charlie? I thought it was real great how you won that race. I was real proud of you. Please don't feel badly. I lost the race once in junior high. I know how you feel, but I got over it. Look, Chip, Uncle Charlie didn't lose. He won. Well, that's even worse when you win, but you lose. Look, Charlie, uh, what we're all trying to say is that we hope... What's with the hearts and flowers? It's over and done with. And let me tell you something. I had the time of my life I wouldn't have had half as much fun if I'd have spent that hundred dollars going to Hawaii. Well, we all enjoyed it. It was a great race. But what's going to happen to Chips again? Best thing that could happen to a horse his age. I'm giving him to a kid instead of the bicycle I promised. You. Thanks, Uncle Charlie. Dad, I got a horse. Yes, I heard, Ernie. Charlie, I'll take over the board, Bill. You don't have to do that. I made a swap with Doc. He takes care of Ernie's horse. I work his paces for him every Saturday morning. 
That's wonderful, Charlie. Every man should have a hobby. Just what I was thinking about you. Steve, I found out that for $1,500, you can pick up a three-year-old pacer that... No, wait a minute, Charlie. I, uh, I already have a hobby. Golf. <laughs> Golf? You've got to be kidding. All I can say is, you're in a rut. <laughs> Two hours ago. Hurry, Uncle Charlie. I'm going in to get my transistor. Well, get mine, too. To my luck, you don't need any transistors. There's a radio in the cab of the truck. Oh, well, sure. Well, you always turn on the wrong stations. Wrong stations. Listen, here you are, Charlie. Now, this one keeps the mosquitoes away, mm -hmm. and this one relieves the etching if that one doesn't work. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. You're not going camping up in Yosemite uh, to watch television. Well, Gordon has let me use it, Dad. He says the light keeps the bears away. <laughs> Don't snow your dad with dumb talk like that, Junior. It's bad enough that I'm stuck with two transistors. Come on, get in there. See you guys in a couple of weeks. Uh, well, happy war games. Okay, Uncle Charlie. Oh, Steve, uh, I've been thinking, you know, tomorrow night, uh, Turkey Wilson is fighting and they're showing it. And besides, there might be something to this, keeping the bears away. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. I just want to protect the boys. Oh, I understand, Charlie. Yeah. I'll get the door, Charlie. So long, you guys. Have fun. Okay, bye, Rob. Come on, Charlie. Be careful. Bye. Take her easy now. Okay, okay. Bye-bye. So long, Charlie. Bye. Come on. Rob, uh, was Katie crying? Yeah, but not because of them. It's because I'm leaving. Oh. Well, it's nice to know she's going to miss you that much, huh? It's not so much that, Dad. It's she keeps hinting that she wants to go along. Go along? Yeah. <laughs> Rob, you ought to understand that that's impossible. I mean, uh, well, you just don't take your wife to war games. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that, Dad. You know what she did? She packed three of her pictures in my suitcase so I wouldn't forget her. Three? <laughs> <laughs> I hardly had any room for my socks. <laughs> Dad. You don't think I should take her on, do you? I mean, she could stay in a motel. Rob, you're only going to be gone for two weeks, right? Yeah. Now, you say you're going to be on maneuvers. When would she have a chance to see you? Yeah. It's getting late. I better drive you to the train depot. Okay. Hey, Rob. I'll write you every day. Me too. I already wrote you a letter. You did? It's in your suitcase. <laughs> no, Dad. I feel very noble letting Rob go to his army reserve without making a big scene. Good girl. Not many wives would let a handsome husband like I have go away like that. Where's Camp Roberts? Oh, it's up north near a town called Paso Robles. Well, after all, it's only for two weeks. I sure hope he doesn't run into any wild women. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't make any difference. Rob would never look at anyone else. And what you said before was right. A wife should never strangle her husband, especially when he's doing man's work. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't go up there with him. If there's anything a man doesn't need, it's a, a silly wife when he's busy doing more important things. Well, now, Katie, I didn't say anything about strangling him. I just said... Hello. Oh, yes, yes, I'll accept the call. Hi, Rob. Hey, how'd you get to a phone? I thought you were on maneuvers. 
Well, the lieutenant says that even during a real war, guys get leave once in a while. Say, Dad, uh, could I talk to Katie? Yes. She just happens to be standing right here. <laughs> Rob? We were just talking about you. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Kate. Where are you going? To pack. <laughs> to pack. Rob, what's going on? I just asked her to come up. I think I'll get some time off before this is over, and, uh, well, I'll be able to see her. Well, yeah, but you're out in the field. You don't want your family wandering around. And... Rob, I don't know how she did it, but she's already packed. <laughs> Thank you. This is nice. They call it the day room. Aren't you allowed to use it at night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a report back, Rob. Oh. Hi. Hi. Stan, this is my wife, Katie. Uh, Katie, this is Stan Burroughs. He's one of the men in my squad. All he does is talk about you. I just found out we're aggressors. Aggressors? They put the battalion from San Francisco against the battalions from Los Angeles. Uh, that really spices things up a little. Except I'm from Kansas City. <laughs> we gotta go, Ron. Yeah, okay. Uh, Katie. Honey. I won't be able to get in touch with you until the war games are actually over. They probably wouldn't let me use a phone even if I could find one. I know. I'll be fine. I'll go for long walks. And I'll be fine. Rob? One more thing. Oh, what is it, honey? <laughs> well, couldn't you get transferred to the friendly forces? <laughs> I think you better kiss me. <laughs> and I don't have to tell you that this is an important maneuver. Just remember, anything that moves and is not wearing Aggressor Forces ID is the enemy and will be taken to a collecting point. Bear in mind the entire area is off limits to civilians. <laughs> What? She says she's your wife. Well, what's she doing out here? That's a good question. Come along. at this moment, including espionage. I'm not a spy. I'm just his wife, and I went for a walk, and... I'm afraid I'm going to have to put a full security check on you before I can release you, Mrs. Douglas. Private Douglas, weren't you told of the seriousness of these operations? Yes, sir. Well, Tramp, you have a good day? But you're ready for your dinner, hmm? Yes, this is Stephen Douglas. Major who? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't have a daughter-in-law who's a prisoner of war, Major. <laughs> what? She was. She did? <laughs> oh, I know you don't usually call the father of a soldier on maneuvers. I, I appreciate it, Major. Yes, and thanks for releasing her. I know it puts Robbie at... <laughs> I mean, uh, Private Douglas in a bad position, and... Yeah, but they're really very sensible kids, Major, and, well, I'm sure a thing like this couldn't happen again. Uh, fine. And thanks again for calling. Goodbye, sir. Well, it looks like uh, Rob was in kind of a jam there for a while. Ah! Yeah. Well, here's a letter from Charlie and the boys. Dear Steve, well, Yosemite is great. Only now we're on our way to see some more California. Remember that little lake where you and me went fishing the first time we came out here? Me and the boys are going over there. And it's right near where Robbie's clan army. So we thought we'd look him up. 
The boys are sending postcards, so I'll close now. Charlie. P.S. TV does keep the bears away. We didn't see one. <laughs> so we thought we'd look them up. Tramp, how would you like to take a ride and prevent what might be a disaster? <laughs> okay, we'll talk it over while we're having dinner, huh? Campsite, considering I had to find it in the middle of the night. Yeah, well, this one's lots better than the other one. I can get about 30 stations here. <laughs> Don't talk so loud, Ernie. You're drowning out Tony Pease and the Leaning Towers. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Get them plugs out of your ears. Come on, get them out now. There's a lake around here someplace. Your dad and I fished it one time. Ernie, you go find that lake over there. Well, suppose I get lost. I flung compass reading in the Boy Scouts once. I wasn't very good at finding moths on the north side of trees, either. Look, you're two healthy American kids, not a couple of dummies. Now, go find that lake, and you figure out a way not to get lost. Mark the trees or something. Okay, Uncle Charlie. The batteries in my transistor are getting low anyway. I'll look over here, and you go that way. Hmm. You city kids. You don't know what to do with fresh air. <laughs> and Mendelssohn gets the line drive to center. Ray Evans is going back, back. He makes a leaping one-handed catch for the third out. <laughs> Douglas, the pair wants to see you. Where? At the collecting point. <laughs> Yes, sir. We've got another one. Another what, sir? Chip! Hi, Rock. Something tells me it isn't to pin a medal on you.
here it comes. And it's a ground ball to Littman. He throws the Freund for the fourth out. Littman takes off the signs of the back Now he's ready. He throws his high What's the matter? Don't you guys like middle. baseball? You're a prisoner, sir. Prisoner? Prisoner of what? We're not supposed to talk, sir. Come along with us. Okay. But you guys are horsing around with trouble. I'm a close personal friend of a guy who plays golf with General Eisenhower. Please march, sir. March where? That way. Guess who wants to see? They must have got my Uncle Charlie this time. Man, didn't you leave anybody at home? Just my dad. Well, I'm glad you didn't bring the whole family. Well, that's funny, Trav. There's nobody around. That's not quite so, sir. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Steve Douglas, and I came up here just to prevent... Are you Rob Douglas's dad? Yes, I am. So you see, there's been some mistake. Poor Rob. He could have sold tickets. <laughs> March, sir. March? I don't think you understand. What... I do understand, sir. And please talk to your dog. Uh, uh, stop that, will you, Tramp? Uh, Tramp, come back here. Tramp, come back here. Please, March, sir. March? Where? That way. <laughs> All right. In my day, they had a real army. When they threw a guy in the brig, it was a real brig. Not a bunch of ropes. Uncle Charlie, will you please cut it out? This is just a simulated stockade. Simulated, my foot. It's nothing but a bunch of cheap ropes. You guys got no class. Hey, Uncle Charlie, we caused Robbie enough trouble already. Hey, Uncle Charlie, oh, weren't you in the Merchant Marine? You stay out of this, Ernie. I hope you got some news, Alice, because you and the whole army are right on the edge of being sued for false arrest. The Major's going to look into it, Douglas. The Major? The Major. <laughs> Well, I've heard the whole incredible story, and I still find it hard to believe. I think it's a series of accidents, Lieutenant. I mean, first the wife, then the brother, then his second brother, and finally this gentleman who says he's going to sue the army. I put a full security check on every one of them, sir. It just sort of happened. Well, let's see that it doesn't happen again. Private? Yes, sir. You will see to it that your family thoroughly understands what is permitted and what is not permitted. Yes, sir. Do I understand that that animal is another Douglas? Yes, sir. He's our dog, but, uh, well, I don't know how he got here. We didn't bring him, sir. Entirely too much time is being taken up by these proceedings. Private Burroughs reporting the capture of another prisoner, sir. They told me to report here. Thank you, Private. Bring him in. Your name is Douglas, of course. Uh, yes, sir. Steve! Oh, here you are. Uh, hi, Rob. Uh, sir, my name is Stephen Douglas, and... Uh... Can you explain your presence on a military reservation during maneuvers? Well, yes, sir. You see, I came up here to warn my uh, sons and their uncle not to get mixed up in your maneuvers, and, uh, well, I guess I got here a little late. Yes. Tell me, Mr. Douglas, are there any more Douglases at home or en route here? No, sir, I, uh, I think we're all here now. Thank you. Now, with your permission, we'll go on with our war. Lieutenant, get the dog out of here. Yes, I Even Dad got captured? Oh, 
was he doing up there? He came up to tell us not to get captured. Well, I got to return that camper. If I don't get it back by 6 o'clock, they charge another day's rent. Bye. Did you see Rob before you left, Katie? No. I left him a message. He'll be glad to have us all out of there. Hey, didn't Dad come home with you? Oh, no. Well, he and Tramp came in the other car. Well, they ought to be here any minute. Well, Dad should have been home first. His car's faster. I sure hope he's all right. Well, you don't have to worry about Dad. He can take care of himself. <laughs> Well, would you do something about your dog, please? <laughs> Be quiet, will you, Tramp? Now, will you tell us your story again, Mr. Douglas? From the moment the aggressor forces released you. <laughs> After we were released by the aggressor forces... <laughs> uh, Tramp, now stop that. We went back to the camper, which was left under guard... <clears throat> pardon me. And my sons and their uncle took off. Now, as I said before, when I was getting back into my car, your men, the friendly forces, came up with their bayonets and... <laughs> Tramp, if you don't stop that, you're going to get caught, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, Captain, I suppose you might call our family the, uh, the uh, neutral forces, and we were attacked by both other forces. <laughs> I guess the whole thing really started when my son, Robbie, joined the Army Reserve. <laughs> now... Too bad. Well, Rob, you not only gained a wife, our group gained a vocalist. She gives us a lot of cool. Thanks. Now I really feel like one of the family. Yeah, it didn't sound bad at all. We started together and we finished together. <laughs> Almost good enough. Almost good enough for what, Uncle Charlie? The Frolics, our lodge show. The boys voted me in as entertainment director. What are the frolics? It's a deal that Uncle Charlie's new lodge puts on every other year. You know, the, the men do skits and the... Well, this year is going to be nothing but real pros. None of this amateur night stuff. See, I got Joe Chevelli and his grace notes playing between the acts. Joe Chevelli and his grace notes? Man, what a groove. <laughs> Listen, Buster, they play real music and they don't have an amplifier in the carload. If you young dudes couldn't find a wall socket, you'd be out of business. Uh, fellas, haven't you got something to do upstairs or someplace? Let us know when the show goes on, Uncle Charlie. Rob and I will buy the first two tickets. Oh, no, we won't. We're getting in for free. We know the entertainment director. <laughs> Sorry I yelled at Chips for you, but, uh, you know, I've been working hard on this lodge show. It means a lot to me. I'm sure it does, Charlie, but, uh, well, I just hope you know what you're getting into. I know how these things work. Everybody gets all excited at the first committee meetings, and then when the work really starts, nobody shows up. Not with this bunch, Steve. That lodge is full of the hardest working guys you ever met. I got Fred Furman doing his magic act, and Sawyer Pretock is writing 12 funny sketches for me. Sawyer Pretock? Yeah, you know, the well-known writer. He had that column in the shopping news before it went out of business. Oh, that uh, 
saw your pre <laughs> Now, Steve, I'm all set. Hello? Oh, hiya, Chevelli. You can? Well, work is work. No kidding. Goodbye. Joe Chevelli got a job on the night of the show, huh? Yeah, but look, I haven't got anything to worry about. I got about 40 guys just dying to fill in for me. Yesterday, Sam Torman just begged me to use his group. Three banjos and a flute. <laughs> I'll call him now. Poor Uncle Charlie. He's been on that phone all day long. Yeah. Everybody's conking out on him. Well, we just might have to help him out. And pudding looks good, Kate. Thank you. How can we help him out? Honey, you haven't been around here long enough to know the family psychology. Now, Uncle Charlie already said we weren't good enough to play for his lodge, remember? Well, I know. Oh, so he can't go back on his word. Well, he can't ask us to play even if he needs us. It's a mysterious syndrome called the O'Casey Mule Motivation. <laughs> How do you like that boo? He times his vacation right in the middle of my frolics. <laughs> when did I cook dinner? Uh, you didn't, Charlie. Katie did. Uh, why don't you sit down? Charlie. Well, Charlie, uh, how's the show coming along? Oh, great. Just great. You know, I got a couple other musical uh, groups lined up, you know, to play between acts. And Ted Dollinger is bringing his dog over here for me to see the night. Everybody is just pitching in fine, Steve. Well, that's, that's great. Well, uh, looks like we'll have to find someplace else to play. What are you talking about? He means our family group ought to have some public exposure or something. Yeah. Honking around the living room doesn't do much for our stage presence. What stage presence? Well, Charlie, I, uh, I guess what the boys mean is that they think somebody else should hear our orchestra besides the neighbors. Well, if you want somebody else to hear you, why don't you play between acts down at the lodge? You mean it? Sure, I'll score a couple of the other groups. You know what I mean. Family comes first. Well, <laughs> <laughs> <Great job. laughs> I don't know why, but uh, all of a sudden I'm hungry. Come on, use your head, will you? What good is he if he can't do anything? Well, he saved a cat's life and he got in the paper. That's what he can do. What am I supposed to do? Have the MC come out and announce, here's the dog that saved the cat's life. And then have the dumb dog come out and stare at the audience. Why not? I... Oh, hi. Hello. I'm Steve Douglas. <laughs> Quiet, Tramp. Get him out of here. <laughs> I've had it, O'Casey. I wouldn't let Arthur in your show if you got on your knees and begged me. <laughs> Put him in your show. He barks real good. <laughs> Steve, that dumb dog of his couldn't even sit up. Oh, things will get better, Charlie. You'll see. Look, I got no worries. Thanks a lot, Tramp. <laughs> Both of them? Light cases, but they'll have to stay in bed. Chicken pox sounds like nothing, but uh, we don't fool around with it. But my show goes on tomorrow afternoon. I'm sorry, Uncle Charlie. Yeah. But you still got Robbie and Katie and Dad. Oh, sure. My uncle will understand. Right. Okay. See ya. Uncle Charlie. Uh, uncle Charlie, uh, something's just come up. I'm waiting. Well, I just found out that our, our biology field trip is tomorrow instead of next week. Well, uh, both Katie and I have to go. Uh... It's half our grade, Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie, are you all right? Sure. Thanks. Put me down for next week in your office. Well, what's wrong with you, Mr. O'Casey? I'll be coming in for a nervous breakdown. <laughs> we all feel as bad about it as you do, Charlie, but uh, things will work out. They usually do. But the show is tomorrow, Steve. Tomorrow matinee. And you know what I got? One magic act. And I saw him, Steve. 
he couldn't make money disappear. <laughs> and I got five Floridora guys plus me. It's going to be the worst show in the history of the lodges of America. Maybe it'll all look better when you sleep on it, Tommy. Well, who can sleep with troubles like I got? What are you going to play? We're not going to play, Charlie. I mean, uh, the kids have chicken pox and Rob and Kate can't make it. And... I didn't mean the family. I meant you. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Can you handle something tough like uh, Dardanella? Well, Charlie, I can't get up there on the stage and play the saxophone all by myself. Sure you can. It's called a solo. <laughs> I know that, Charlie. But, well, in the first place, I'm not that good anymore. And have you ever heard a saxophone played without an accompaniment? I'll get a piano player to back you up. I'm sorry, Charlie, but I just can't do it. Okay, skip it, Steve. You know, I can play around the house here with the kids, but... All right, Steve, forget it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlie. <laughs> For the Between the Acts entertainment, we bring you that wonderful family, the Musical Douglases. Charlie, where's the piano player? His wife is having her hair done, and he had to stay home and mind the baby. You told me there'd be a piano player. Get out there, you're holding up the show. <laughs> by myself. I felt a little ridiculous out there all alone, but, uh, but Charlie needed me. I left as soon as my solo was finished. One thing, I found out dads feel just as stupid as kids do when they have to do dumb junk. <laughs> well, I think you could have worded that a little differently, Ernie, but you're right. Dads do feel stupid when they have to do dumb junk. <laughs> well, now, uh, eat your soup, huh? Uh, where's Uncle Charlie now, Dad? Well, I imagine he's breathing a sigh of relief because the show must just about be over. Hey, my apple ante bit turned out good after all. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Grand Vizier is making his speech now. Mm. That ought to take about three hours. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you fellas hang up those costumes and don't give any knots in those wigs. You want me to hang around until the speech is over, Charlie? No, no, you fellas go on home and have dinner and I'll stay here and lock up after the speeches. Okay, see you tonight. Right. Yeah, uh, have a good dinner. Come on, back. <laughs> get, uh, get, get here a little bit. Yeah. See you later. Home is lighter when we get together here. Our activities, the good work we do, the way we help young men to better jobs, all of these things are important to the community. Now, nothing can be done without fun. You've been enjoying yourself here.
Uncle Charlie home yet, Dad? No, he isn't, Chip, and I can't understand it. The show must have been over a long time ago. Hey, maybe they're having a party backstage to thank him for all his work. Well, maybe. But I wish he'd call. I'm getting a little worried. Ernie, it's your turn to change the record. Not me. My chicken pox are beginning to chicken or something. <laughs> well, here's more of what the doctor ordered. Plenty of liquids. Well, Uncle Charlie isn't home yet. How did the hi-fi get up here? Well, we went down and got it. Yeah. We knew you didn't want us going downstairs to play records. Well, now, that was a pretty silly thing to do, wasn't it? I guess that was dumb. Mm. Well, hey, Dan. As long as you're up, would you mind doing me a favor? Put on my Herbert and the Gorillas album. <laughs> Herbert and the Gorillas? Ernie, you can do me an even bigger favor. You put it on after I leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> Nice afternoon. Very nice afternoon. I don't think I've seen you in the park before. You come here often? Once in a while to watch the boys. That's real sweet. <laughs> I'll have to keep my eye open for you, Grandma. <laughs> Grandma? You calling me Grandma? Well, yeah. Would you rather me call you honey? Honey? That does it. What's he doing down there? I see. Well, I'll, I'll be right down. Thanks for calling. Hey, <laughs> Steve, am I glad to see you. Sergeant, this is Steve Douglas. He'll tell you why I'm dressed like this, and I'll explain why I had to belt the old geezer. Sergeant, what, what's going on here? Well, you see, uh, Mr. O'Casey was locked out of his lodge building, Mr. Douglas, and he was forced to walk home because his clothes were locked inside the building. Oh. Well, if you believe me, how come you had to keep me here? Well, we have to have actual identification, regardless of what we believe. Now, Mr. Douglas, will you verify that this is Mr. Charles O'Casey and that he does reside with you, sir? Uh, yes, Sergeant. Here's my identification. Now, what's this about belting some old geezer? Well, the gentleman is impressing charges. He just thought that Mr. O'Casey was a nice lady and he wanted to make her uh, his acquaintance. He got a little forward and I had a belt. Did you bring a change of clothing for Mr. O'Casey? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even think of it. I was so anxious to get down here. Come on, let's get out of here before the whole world sees me dressed like this. Okay, well, thank you, Sergeant. May I suggest you take him right home, sir? Well, I promise you, we, uh, we won't be stopping along the way. <laughs> Charlie? Hmm? Wow, this is heavy. I don't think my chicken pox can take much more of this. Well, Charlie, you might as well stop talking about it. It's all over. Uncle Charlie, is that you? <laughs> One crack out of you guys and you got trouble coming like you never had before. What do you two fellas think you're doing? We knew you didn't want this upstairs, Dad. Yeah, well, we thought it would be easier going down here. Uh -huh. 
Well, I'll take it. Well, you get back up there and no more getting out of bed without orders from the doctor or me or Uncle Charlie. Now, is that understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, uh, quiet. Quiet. <laughs> well, Charlie, it's been quite a day, hmm? Now, I never want to go through another one like it. Well, I'd better throw some hamburgers on the fire and then we'd better be on our way. Good. Uh, on our way where? Back to the lodge. That matinee was just a shakedown. The main show is tonight. You mean I have to get up there by myself and do the same thing all over again? Not if you don't want to. Good. Maybe you'd like to take a crack at Dardanella. <laughs> I'll lock up and back, Charlie. Okay. Good show, Steve. Thanks. Turn them off. Now, uh, would you explain it? We're not sleepy, and you said to stay in bed, so we're listening to music. <laughs> and he plays creepy stations. Well, so we get under the covers. That way I can't hear what he's playing, and he can't... I think I get the picture. <laughs> now, let's put the radios away, turn out the lights, lie down, and go to sleep, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can't get rid of the chicken pox. Good night, guys. My dad. A dad? Got you. Well, me and Ernie, <laughs> Ernie and I, that is, well, we noticed that you didn't yell at anybody, even once. And we think that's neat. <laughs> well, thanks, fellas. I guess I'm starting to get old enough to notice weird things like that. I hope I can be a dad like you someday. And he's not trying to apple polish you so we can listen to the radios, neither. Either. <laughs> Boy, Chip, quit trying to be a father so soon. <laughs> Well, I don't want to sound like I'm making a speech, but uh, I just want to say you kids make it pretty easy to be a good father. All fathers should be as lucky. Good night, fellas. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, Chip. You almost had me bawling when you said all that stuff to Dad. Knock it off, Ernie. Okay. Good night. Good night.